Greetings to you. I am Louis Farrakhan, minister of Muhammad's Mosque Number no. 7, New York City, speaking to you on behalf of that great teacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black man and woman of America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, whose return to this microphone is anxiously awaited and expected in the near future. To him, I am deeply grateful and highly honored for granting me this great privilege and opportunity once again to represent him and his message to you, his beloved people. Our subject is titled, The Black Man Must Unite and Build a Black Economy. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's task in America is very similar to the task of Moses in Egypt. The mission of Moses to Israel was twofold. Moses had to elevate Israel both spiritually and economically. This is also the divine mission of the prophesied man like Moses, who is in America today among the oppressed, mentally enslaved and exploited black men. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has the twofold task of elevating the black man and woman of America both spiritually and economically. Messenger Muhammad has worked tirelessly and unceasingly for nearly 40 years to give his followers and his people a higher standard of living. His mission was and is to improve the quality of life of the black man and woman in America and throughout the world. His mission is to bring to us that heavenly life of peace, prosperity, and perpetual progress that is referred to in the scriptures as the kingdom of heaven or the hereafter. Many people in America and throughout the world have labored under the misconception that heaven or the hereafter comes after man is physically dead. This is the wrong way to understand scripture. This kind of misinterpretation of scripture makes a person or people careless about their present condition in hopes that a mystery God will better conditions for them after physical death. This kind of misinterpretation of scripture robs man of the will to resist the forces that make his life miserable and robs man of the will to put forth the necessary effort to make a better life for himself, his family, and his nation. Messenger Muhammad advises us to search carefully the pages of the Holy Quran and Bible to see if God and his prophets we're describing to us a heaven or hereafter while we live, or a heaven or hereafter which comes to us after we are physically dead. Messenger Elijah Muhammad calls on the religious teachers of the so-called Negroes and the religious teachers of the Muslim world to get away from the preaching of such ignorant and slavish doctrine that man will receive heaven or the hereafter after he is physically dead. Messenger Muhammad teaches us that heaven is an elevated state or condition of this life, and the hereafter is the same. An elevated state or condition of life here on this earth, after the destruction of the power and authority of the wicked to rule us under injustice. Of course, some scholars may argue that according to scripture, heaven or hereafter comes after death. But Messenger Muhammad asks the question, did you not know that the earth and its people are already dead spiritually? Under the yoke of sin, ignorance, oppression, injustice, poverty, and want? Messenger Muhammad says that this is the time that the dark people of our planet, and especially the so-called American Negroes, 
should come into that heavenly state or condition of life. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been raised up by Allah in the midst of the mentally dead black man and woman of America to guide us into that heavenly life of peace, contentment of mind, brotherly love, prosperity, and unlimited progress. And this is why Messenger Muhammad calls on the black man and woman of America to unite and build a black economy to inspire the black man to build a black economy is a task of tremendous magnitude due to the crippling effect of spiritual misteaching through the religion of Christianity which has given the masses of black people a false unreal and impractical view of life its reward for labor and its consequences for the lack of labor Consequently, before Messenger Muhammad could effectively attack the black man's economic plight in America, he had to liberate the black man spiritually and mentally from the slavish doctrine of a belief in a mystery God and a better life for man after man is physically dead. To believe that there is a God in the sky or even on the earth that is going to do everything for us. And we just have to sit back, pray, and all our desires will come to pass is to make an absolute fool of ourselves. It disgraces our worship of God and manifests our ignorance of God, nature, its laws, and how they function. Messenger Muhammad says we must wake up today from the belief in a mystery God. Men have searched for billions and trillions of years for that mystery God and they have not found him. So wise men lose no time searching for that that does not exist. If man will not work, if man will not sweat, if man will not fight bleed and die to change his own condition, then there is no God that will do it for him. Have not you heard the saying that God helps those who help themselves? The Holy Quran is very clear concerning this matter. It is written in the Holy Quran, Verily, never will Allah change the condition of a people until they change it themselves. Again, it is written in the Holy Quran that man can have nothing but what he strives for. From this we learn the lesson that where there is no striving, there is no gain. For as long as a people lack the will to make the necessary sacrifice to change their own condition, their condition will remain the same. And this is why Messenger Muhammad calls on the black man of America to unite and build a black economy. There is a song from the play Porgy and Bess written by white people depicting their view of our condition. I got plenty of nothing and nothing is plenty for me. This song is sung by black people about black people. It is about a man who is contented with nothing. A man whose idea of heaven is a place where he can sit around all day doing nothing. Did not you know, my beloved black brothers and sisters, that a man who has nothing and wants nothing is truly a dead man? In the scriptural teaching of the resurrection of the dead, Messenger Muhammad teaches us that it is referring to the dark people of the world in general and to the black man of America in particular. Gabriel's blowing his horn only means an angel or messenger of God sounding the trumpet of truth in the ears of the black man causing him to be spiritual life. 
This quickening of the masses of the people to mental and spiritual life makes them dissatisfied with their condition of nothingness. This quickening of the masses to mental and spiritual life makes the masses to want what the classes have always had. When the black man of America and the world realize that our wants can only be properly and lastingly satisfied by our own efforts, that we must work, we must make the necessary sacrifice to fulfill our needs, then and only then can we say that we are resurrected from the grave of ignorance and mental death. Today, the black man of America is coming to life. He no longer is satisfied with nothing. He wants what all other human beings want. And again, this is why Messenger Muhammad calls on the black man of America to unite and build a black economy to satisfy our wants. Our basic wants are freedom, justice, equality, food, clothing, shelter, security, and the knowledge and love of self. These wants are very basic, but our wants are really unlimited. For as long as man lives, man shall want. And this is why as black men and women, we must unite to build a black economy. Man must look to nature to provide him with his wants. A certain amount of food, clothing, and shelter may sometimes be obtained from nature with little or no human effort. But this holds true only of the simplest wants of the most primitive men, and even then, only in exceptional cases. But after noting these few exceptions, we must conclude that nature does not generally bestow her gifts with a free hand. Practically none of the infinite number of things that man wants is furnished him freely by nature. Therefore, man must work for what he gets. Nature provides the material, but man must provide the energy and the ingenuity to satisfy his wants. How can we as black people expect our personal, national, and worldwide condition to change if we shun the field of action? Can we as a people become great without merit or qualifications? Are harvests possible or crops available without plowing and cultivation? Is victory won without labor and perseverance? Can power be obtained without effort? These are mere delusions with which the lazy flatter themselves. This way of thinking is contrary to the divine laws of God and nature. If God ever made anyone mighty and great, except through one's own personal endeavor and sacrifice, surely he would have done so with his prophets and messengers. But they all had to undergo trials and tribulations. Some of the prophets even had to fight battles. They all had to labor in order to attain the ends of God. Let us then be resigned to the fact that we shall not have progress but in direct relationship to our labor. We must unite and build a black economy for this is the only way for black people to satisfy our wants. According to its definition, Economics is the science of man's activities devoted to obtaining the material means for the satisfaction of his wants. But why must we have a black economy? Though basically and generally all human beings want the same thing, yet no one can deny that the black man of America's condition is unique 
Consequently, the black man's wants are oft times unique and specific. Therefore, the science and knowledge of economics must be applied specifically to the black man of America's unique condition to enable us to obtain the material means of satisfying our wants. We must build a black economy. If we depend totally on white people to satisfy the wants of black people, we must then depend on the corrupt politics of white America. Our history of demonstrations nationally, locally, and on the college campuses of white America to gain political concessions which would enable white people to use their economy to give us more of what we want has proved to be a failure. Wherever whites have conceded to black demands, it has not proved to be nearly enough to satisfy the wants of black people. Therefore, Messenger Elijah Muhammad is right when he calls on us to unite and build a black economy. For in building a black economy, we will be creating the means to satisfy our wants. Messenger Muhammad teaches us that any people dependent upon another people to take their responsibility to satisfy their wants means that they are putting themselves in the position to be a subject people to another people who are free. We, the black man of America, boast that we are free. But Messenger Muhammad says, to boast of freedom of self means that you are one who is responsible for your economic condition. How can we ever be truly free if we continue to depend upon white people to supply our necessities of life. We must begin to do this for ourselves. We must become responsible for self. And in order to do this, we must begin now to build a black economy. To satisfy our wants, we need wealth. Messenger Muhammad teaches us that Allah promises us wealth, money, good homes, and friendship in all walks of life if we submit to him and obey his laws. This promise is not binding on belief alone, for in Islam mere belief counts for nothing except carried into practice. The Bible backs this up in these words, faith without works is dead. To submit to Allah means to carry into practice those principles which would bring us into the possession of money, good homes, and friendships in all walks of life. So if we think that we can have wealth and success on Allah's promise alone without work, sacrifice and perseverance. And if we think we can have friendship in all walks of life without carrying into practice the moral laws of God which produce friendship, and if we think we can have wealth without practicing the principles of economy, we have gravely misunderstood the teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. According to the science of economics, anything that is material, is useful, and is owned by human beings is considered wealth. Ordinarily, wealth is synonymous with capital, and therefore anyone who has wealth is also a possessor of capital. Messenger Muhammad writes, quote, Certainly we want wealth. We cannot enjoy life without wealth, but we should economize that wealth until we are equal with the other nations in the way of economics." End of quote. There is no economic system in the world that is not based on wealth and capital. There is no economic system in the world that is not founded on the ownership of land, 
for all wealth and capital is from the land. Therefore, Messenger Muhammad says we need territory in which to expand. We need some of this good earth here or there so that we can build a system of economy for our people. The accumulation of capital or the accumulation of wealth depends upon the readiness of men to postpone the gratification of wants in the present in the hope of greater satisfaction of their wants in the future. Self-denial and saving is the road to the accumulation of wealth or capital. Toward this end, the Pakistani and Russian people were involved in five-year economic savings plans which helped these countries to build a strong economic system which enabled them to improve the standard of living of their people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad warns the black people of America against following the ways of the extravagant white Americans. For by the black man's following the extravagant white American, he also is extravagant with what little he gets from the white American economic system. Messenger Muhammad says that this is the way that the slave master's children keep us down by their not caring to teach their once black slaves economy. Messenger Muhammad says that as long as we try to practice being equal with the rich white American before we learn and practice self-economy, thrift, or the managing of our affairs and resources so as to avoid waste, we will always be in want under the feet of our enemies. Messenger Muhammad calls on the black man of America to unite and build a black economy. And the first step toward building a black economy is that every black man and woman of America must how to spend and how to save by those of us who desire to see our people out of poverty and want. Messenger Muhammad says that our knowledge of self, others and the time, should force us to become more prudent in our spending. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad alone of all the black leaders in America has both taught and carried into practice the principles of economy among his followers. He has warned us repeatedly about extravagance. In fact, it disgusts him to see us wasting and throwing away our hard-earned money. He warns us about the care and the upkeep of property. Messenger Muhammad has inspired his followers to save, and he has taught us how to spend. For over three years, we, the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, have been involved in a three-year economic savings plan. We have sacrificed, and we are still sacrificing and practicing self-denial. We have postponed the gratification of many of our personal wants to help Messenger Muhammad to build a black economy. And this is what has caused the writers of Time magazine in the March 7, 1969 edition to say of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his followers, quote, Last year the Muslims sank an estimated $6 million in business and real estate, two-thirds of it in Chicago, where the sect is based. Says Muhammad, our goal this year is ten times that amount. Few black businessmen believe that they will achieve this figure. But even if they double their investment next year, it will be a remarkable performance. End of quote. What is it that causes the writers of Time magazine to call the Muslim business expansion and plans remarkable? Is it not the fact that Messenger Muhammad has accomplished this great business expansion with the support of his poor followers, whom he taught the value of saving for the good and future of self? And is it not the fact also that Messenger Muhammad has accomplished this great business expansion 
without the aid of government, without grants from any foundation, without fanfare and demonstrations, without causing injury or harm to anyone. The accomplishments of Messenger Muhammad and his followers are a manifest proof that with right guidance and right leadership, we can unite and build a black economy. Since we, the Muslims, have accomplished this business expansion, schools, farms, warehouses, supermarkets, herds of sheep and cattle, trailer trucks, with the nickels, dimes, and dollars of the poor followers, what could we accomplish in the way of building a black economy if we had the aid of the government and the rich of our kind? Certainly, we could eliminate poverty and want among our people. The standard of living that we seek for ourselves and our people should never be classified by white people as bourgeoisie or middle class. For to live morally clean and upright is not a white middle class value. But Messenger Muhammad teaches us that to live morally clean and upright is the nature of God and the nature of the original black man. To live in a good home and be a possessor of wealth is not a white middle class value. But Messenger Muhammad says that our father Allah is the maker and owner of the heavens and the earth. So why should we live as beggars when the wealth of the earth in reality belongs to the original black man? The standard of living that we seek for ourselves and our people is not based on the middle class values of white people, but it is our belief that every black man, woman, and child should have what Allah has promised. And he has promised us all money, good homes, and friendship in all walks of life. Because the Muslim followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad have submitted to Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, and because we follow the guidance of his messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we are being blessed with success. Messenger Elijah Muhammad spends all of his time, night and day, trying to raise this fallen and dead people to their feet so that we, the black man of America, may go for self and build for self, not on the pattern of our slave masters and their children, which is robbery, spoiling, and the corruption of each other, but on the pattern of justice and righteousness. So let us unite with Messenger Elijah Muhammad and help him to build for us a black economy to satisfy all of our wants. Thank you for listening, and may Allah grant you the light of understanding as I greet you in peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum.